Hey guys, welcome to the flight test. I'm Josh. And I'm Peter. And uh, Peter, <laughs> yeah, this, this is not just an overnight thing. This is, this is a, yes. a work in the making, isn't it? Uh, yeah, this is actually something I've started before we're actually working at flight test. This is a project from uh, last year's journal. I built four, in four weeks, I got this thing in the air, but it was very, very basic. And I'm about four weeks on top of that, here we are, and it's not a whole lot different. So you can see how these builds <laughs> well, go. Basically, I've torn everything out, almost redone all the wiring and stuff. Like, okay. it's been new speed controllers, because I didn't have the right wattage I was getting, and I need to go up in voltage, so I up, I up, up that. And also, some sort of power management system for my servo, which is what I installed, because I was really sketchy flying this thing around. Like, I had no idea what my receiver was doing, because these are some big servos in this airplane. And when you have all that, that servo stuff going on, like when you move the deflections and stuff, you run all that current through the little two traces on the receiver, and I'm yeah. pretty sure the receiver's not built to take that kind of load. So I bought a power box to fit in this airplane. Yeah. Now, what did you build this out of? Uh, this is actually made out of a Lowe's one-inch foam. Okay. It's like kind of like the ice chest style foam. It's like EPS. It's I'm very not, brittle. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's it's like you can crumble in your hands. And oh, guys, if you sure. haven't ever seen this technique here, uh, we actually did a video where you demonstrated how to waterproof airplanes. Yep. And this is a technique that you yeah. shared. And this is this is a little more than that too, because it's uh it's also strengthening too, because if you notice. I can do this all I want. And if this is raw foam, there'll be fingernail marks in there. And like, it looks like it looks like cardboard, but there's a lot more than paper into it. You have three mil yeah. Depron, plywood, balsa wood, mm -hmm. and uh, some paper. aluminum. It's some fiberglass tape, and basically it's a Home Depot like monster plane from uh, yeah. Um, now we're gonna put this together. This is its official maiden. Yeah, it's remaiden. It's remaiden. Because <laughs> I have to test all these systems out before we take it anywhere. Because I'm very concerned about that. Well, why don't we go ahead and start putting it together, and we'll start talking about the pieces as we put it on. Because uh, sure. I'm, I'm dying to see this thing fly. Okay. Right. Now you got a lot of leads there. And if okay. you guys notice, too, these are all silicone uh, 20 AWG wire. Okay. Because these are actually handmade extensions. Because I wanted to be sure there was zero failure points in here, or as many as po or as little as possible. So these are silicone and there's only one run of wire. This meaning there's not multiple extensions stuck together. More points of failure, right? Yeah, more points of failure if you have multiple extensions. Plus I just don't trust a lot of the yeah. pre-made pre ones. If you ever have to use extensions, always tape your extensions when they're internal mm -hmm. inside your machine. This these is are, Home Depot, These right? are Home Depot, yeah. Home Depot, well, uh, Lowe's Spars. Home Depot and Lowe's Spars. That, that was kind of a fail too. If I, if I can recommend you guys anything when building planes like this, try to buy aircraft, air, aircraft parts because this is yeah. This is not aircraft grade anything. Yeah. This is not like 6051 T6 aluminum tubes, blah, yeah, 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 yeah. I would have actually bought the right stuff for this, but the problem is I was on such a time crunch and I didn't know anything about buying any airplane parts yeah. or thinking about where to get the stuff for this. I just I just, well, I just, just winged it, basically. It's still a little bit of a mess in here. I have to clean that up yeah. a little later on. What servos are you running? Servos? Uh, these are all high-tech servos. High-tech servos? Yep. Yeah, don't go cheap. Don't put nine grams like I do. Yeah, I don't think a nine gram flies this one all that well. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's get the other wing on. All right. The simply time is actually not too bad on this thing. It goes together pretty quick. Yeah, I would say it's really good. Now this wing has gotten wider since you've uh, started building on it, right? You yes. Said your ailerons are different. The ailerons got got even worse. At the time, the plane was built kind of bad. When I was wasn't thinking about aileron proportions, so here's more of that planning phase. So if you design your own airplanes like this, try to do all your planning ahead of time because this is built I for three D. plan this out. <laughs> So yep, that's a failure right there. I think it looks pretty cool though. And if you ever hover this, you're gonna have plenty of control authority, right? Yep, and the funny thing is when I built this thing, I intended to hover it. But my power system is not letting me do that and the design itself is not, not fit for that task. I would have to re redesign this whole airplane and build it differently if I wanted to hover it. Maybe there's a version two someday, right? Yep, well this one makes a smoking hole in the ground. Now your power plant, what do you have for motors? Uh, th those are HiMax 6320s. They're 250 kV, but I'm pretty sure the kV is wrong on the motors. Because uh, I'm not getting anywhere near the numbers I should be getting. Because right now, with the current 20 by 8 propeller and a uh, 10 cell, 10,000 milliamp battery, at full power, this should be pulling, sucking roughly around like 60 to 80 amps. At least it said in the manual mm -hmm. where they had all the prop specs, specs and whatnot. But I'm only pulling 30 amps. <laughs> 30 amps. So something is not right because 30 so, amps per motor. All right, all right cool. so what's left? Um, I could have put the struts on. Struts. Uh, these are actually made out of a balsa wood and there's an uh, aluminum strip in there. They're really weak in this dimension, meaning they bend. But, the, but they're really, really taut in that dimension. So basically, if I were to rate this airplane with positive and negative Gs, I'd say positive Gs, I could probably rate about two and a half. I wouldn't even rate it at 0.5 negative G. So no one were to fly into this one. This tips the scales, and you're really close to crossing yeah. over limit. Talk yeah. about that real quick. Uh, AMA is a 55-pound legal limit that you can't exceed or you need a waiver to fly, but I'm pretty sure this is topping the scales right around 50. So Peter, where's your tail? Your I actually little, stored, uh, some of the, fins. I stored some of the parts in the airplane. Power plant's not active right now, so I don't worry about dying. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, it just never gets old. <laughs> so, Peter, do you have a car battery for this? No, I have he the tray. Much, much more expensive, right? <laughs> much more expensive, yeah. Here's a bunch of uh, 
cheapo Hobby King lipos. Okay. So yeah, these these are all 5S batteries, and the reason I did this is in case this plane is a smoking crater in the ground, and yeah. it's never to be heard of ever again. We got a whole bunch of 5 cell batteries? I have a whole bunch of 5 cell batteries. And actually, this actually just locks into, I have two tabs in the front, and then I have a quarter, quarter 20 bolt. Nice. So it, the whole tray just slides and locks down. All right, we're ready for maiden flight. We're ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Are you nervous? I am incredibly nervous right now. <laughs> but just try not to think about it, okay? Okay. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, ready to go? I'm ready to see this, man. I'm having a little time, road, difficult time rotating because my, my, my tires are flat and out of air. There you go. Yep. Nice! <laughs> nice work, man! <laughs> so how's it feel? Not too bad. Is it, is it me or is it slower than it was before? Uh, it's roughly about the same speed it was. Still pathetically slow. That is crazy slow. Good work. But yeah, I definitely need to air up the tires next time though. <laughs> that, was, that was a full scale rollout, wasn't it? Yep. How about power? Power is roughly around half throttle. It's just so draggy and slow. Hey, can you give me some up, cl uh, up, up clicks? Yeah. One, two, three, three four, keep going. five. I need quite a bit. I think I have to trim down to the beginning. A little more. Only do this if you trust somebody yeah. to, to move your controls. Keep going, a little more. All oh, right, you're there. just now in the neutral spot. Yeah. How's that? That's pretty good. Good work. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> I think my aileron's getting blown up. Look, look at the trailing edge of the aileron. I do, I do. It looks like they're, they're both. They're deflecting upwards a little bit. Why is that? Probably some aerodynamic effects I'm not completely aware of. All right, hey, now, now about half power, a little under half. That's insane. Yeah, trimmed out the whole flight. Hey, Noah, back up here, buddy, so you can do a low pass, okay? You're not gonna do a... No, I'm just gonna yeah. pull out, so. <laughs> <laughs> Does right. it feel like your uh, your uh, little one? Not at all. This is completely different. It's all turn. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> pathetic salt turn. That wasn't pathetic. That was epic. <laughs> this thing is terrifying. Oh my gosh! It just it looks so. You have differential thrust, don't I you? I have differential thrust. Yeah. I should take it up for a flat span. <laughs> Do you think you come back with a fin? <laughs> I don't even know if I want to be in the way of this. This is crazy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it does not move at all. I nailed it all. It barely looks like it's accelerating. There's so much mass. Yeah, I know. It's hilarious. The disc area is relatively small for the propeller size of this aircraft, too. That is Those a... aerons are having me like curious about how they're deflecting. It, you're out. a little nervous, aren't you? Yeah, about that. Because now know, they're loading the servo in the other direction. You know what I honestly think it is? I think it's the uh, prop blast going over your counterbalances. Could be. You know. Oh what? yeah, you might be right on that. Because I didn't have this problem before. All right, coming in for landing. Coming in for landing. Looks just like a full scale, brother. Look at that. <laughs> Great work, brother. <laughs> yeah, the aerons have. I've got something weird. Check out the aerons. Oh, it looks like it's actually ripping away from the uh, hinge line. Look. Yeah, that came unglued. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think I forgot to glue these in. Like the aileron has slid out. Like that would have been so funny with the aileron oh to fall gosh. off the airplane, but yeah, we're good to go. That's insane. Power box is good. Power box is good. Yeah, everything is good. Friends, uh, is good. this is the beginning. This is not just a one and done. This yep. is going to be around for a long time. Uh, just like your awesome uh, aircraft carrier, <laughs> yep. uh, this is going to be a staple that we're going to enjoy. So uh, look for this in future episodes with future crazy projects. Good job, man. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm, I finally, it, my, my nerves can calm out a little bit and I know the system works okay. Yeah. Oh, I got cool. I to do temp checks and everything first. Cool. So, yeah, catch you guys later. That, if you're watching this right now, the speed build is available on the store. <laughs> it's $33. Peter hand cuts every single one of them. So check I'll it out. I'll hand cut your throat. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time.